Learning Module 7, Second Order P-Delta Effects. We begin by defining the geometry of the system. So under Geometry, select Define Frame. In this case, we just have one bay with a base spacing of 28 feet. We're going to work in inches here, so we'll go with 12 times 28. Hit Apply, and the member's in. The assignment is suggesting that we subdivide the member into 10 elements, so let's do that. So under Geometry, select Subdivide, and we'll run the number of segments up to 10. We'll select element number 1, so, and then we'll hit Apply, and element 1 will be subdivided into 10 elements. Let's turn off the node and element numbers. So under View, select Labels, select Node Numbers. Repeat the procedure under View, Labels, and Element Numbers. Next, we'll define the section and material properties. We select Properties, Define Section. Instead of typing in all the values, we'll select Database, and we'll find the W14 by 48. After locating the W14 by 48, we click on it. The values are all typed in down below, and we hit Apply, and Section 1 is saved as a W14 by 48. We'll now attach that section to all the elements. So under Properties, Attach Section, select All, and hit Apply. In a similar way, we'll define and attach the material properties. So we'll start under Properties, Define Material, type in the material name, which is Steel. Our E value will be 29,000 KSI, and then we'll hit Apply. And now we'll attach that material property to the elements. So under Properties, Attach Material, select All for all materials, all elements, and hit Apply. And now the section and material properties have been defined and attached to all the elements. We'll now define the boundary conditions. So under Conditions, first we'll define the fixities. So select Define Fixities. We have a pin at the left end. So this is Restrain X Displacement <coughs> and Restrain Y Displacement. And we select Node 1 and hit Apply. We'll then clear the list, release the X Displacement. So we have a roller. That is, it'll just be supported in the Y. Select the other end of the beam and hit Apply. With the support conditions defined, we'll now go on and apply the loads. So under Conditions, Define Forces. So here we'll place an axial force along the member. So we select the right end here where the roller is, and we're going to place 50% of the elastic or oil or buckling load. That value is, in our case, 613.5 kips. So I'll type in 613.5. Make sure that it's negative, so it'll be pointing to the left, and hit Apply. Next, we'll apply the end moments. So under Condition, Define Moments. At the right end, selecting that node, we're going to have 200 inch kips positive. Hit Apply. Clear the list, and on the left end, select it we're going to have minus 150 inch kips. So I'll remove that 200 and replace it by negative 150. Hit Apply, and our moments have been defined. Our preprocessing is complete, and now we can go on and perform the analysis. To do this, we'll select Analysis, Second Order Elastic. Now we will need to provide a couple of the parameters down at the bottom. Uh, we are doing a planar frame analysis. We only provided the boundary conditions in the XY plane. So we'll change that to planar frame. And then we'll hit apply. And now the analysis is complete. In this learning module, we're trying to see how much the moments amplified as a result of, of applying that axial force. So under results, we'll select diagrams and we'll plot the moment Z or the major axis moment diagram. So we'll select moment Z and hit Apply. 
In this case, we can see that the maximum moment occurs somewhere near the middle of the span at approximately 391 inch kips. Now this is about almost twice as large as the moment that we applied at the end. So we are getting a moment amplification along the span of the length of this member of almost a factor of two. And that's as a result of applying that axial force. This moment amplification is commonly known as the P small delta effect. We can complete this assignment by going back and changing the amount of axial force to other proportions of the elastic buckling load. This concludes this learning module.